Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. I'm going to stamp out a uh, the new Beaver Dam stamp. Uh, new in terms of new as of 2012. And I've been wanting to use this stamp in a kind of a early winter type of scene. Something very still at night. Maybe even some snowfall or something like that. And it's a fairly large stamp, and I want some moonlight over it. So I'm going to go with a half page or a vertical format for it. And I want to have some, tra you know, a little bit of a lakeside in the back and um, in the background something like this, and I want to have some moonlight kind of coming through and, you know, kind of uh, creating a, a nice dramatic um, scene. Um, because of the scale, you know, the dimension of uh, the scene, um, Looks like I have a piece of my hair on this uh, stamp here. Uh, I'm gonna do it in mono, you know, monochrome, um, just a kind of grayscale scene. And I'm wiping off kind of the interior, dabbing off some of the ink off some of these trees because I want the moonlight to be affecting. And influencing the, uh, you know, the value of those of those trees. Now, what should I do? Should I do this a little off center? I can create kind of a, you know, a lighting scheme coming in that direction. I've kind of wiped off the bottom of the uh, reflections as well, just to kind of soften things up a touch. And I think I'm going to have these trees maybe going off the top of the page a little bit, on top of the scene, like that. Okay. And I'll use this side of the uh, lakeside cove again. All right. Wipe off a little bit of this side. And overlap the previous impression, about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch or so. And it'll get, you know, blend right in. That, you know, that little hair got me again. I need to get rid of that guy. Anyways, it left a little bit of a impression there, but that area is going to be so dark it's not even going to matter. periodically in workshops in the past. Uh, eh, you know, some people are really super particular about uh, their impressions, and that's okay. You know, it's okay to be uh, somewhat of a perfectionist and when it comes to things, but, you know, some, honestly, sometimes people would say, hey, you know, they'd raise their hand, they'd say, uh, that dot right there came out wrong, or something like that, you know. And you can't just say, oh, don't worry about it, you know. Well, I don't know. That's probably what I did say, but I would say something like, well, it's not going to matter in the end. But for the entire rest of the uh, scene, as they're stamping it out, you know, you know, I kind of make my way around uh, all the individuals, and I can tell that person is just eyeballing that little dot or something like that through the entire scene. Um, okay, this is the snow... No field, I think. Stamp. I'm gonna have a bit of a bank right here. And I'll stamp it a couple times like that. And another time. I mean, it could just be dirt too, or something like that. It doesn't have to be uh, represent snow. Okay. All right. 
And um, I was going to do something else. Um, just thinking about putting some things out here. Maybe that's where the water is down there. And maybe this is kind of just a little uh, dry and kind of marshy, kind of around a beaver dam type of thing. And, hmm. Oh, good. I have my sedge filler stamp right here. I'm gonna stamp some of this out. Overlap, kind of nice even pressure. Don't take the stamp and rock it like that, you know. Getting real heavy impressions around the perimeter. Just not, usually I have my finger in the middle of, you know, small stamps, and I'm holding with my outside, but uh, kind of the main pressure is kind of right in the middle. So you take a stamp like this, stamp it out, pressure in the middle, and a nice flat, even application of it. Okay, and with all these uh, branch parts, I thought it would be kind of good to, I'm just going to use um, one of these uh, trunks right here, and see, I'm going to take off some of the bottom because it wouldn't make sense to kind of have it end so abruptly in a straight line, and maybe on the top too. Or some kind of beavered benign on it on the top and bottom or something like that. I tell you what, that that's too awkward for me. Um, I'm gonna give a little bit of a kind of a soft edge mask here, and I hope this comes out. Not just for my stamping, um, stamping sake, but uh, since I'm filming this, okay, I'm gonna make it, try to make it appear as though some of this uh, I should actually compose it first, um, let's see how about this, how about it, it's coming off from that edge right there into the scene Trying to make it appear as though it's kind of being covered by some of the gra uh, grass there. So I don't have just a straight line on the bottom. I have some clumps of grass coming into it. Okay, kind of like that. I, I like that. I'm going to do another one, I think, on the other side. Just kind of balance it off. Yeah, this makes beavers... Uh, yeah, they don't... We're out chopping and falling trees all the time, so sometimes they don't use some of them in their dams. One of my favorite movies is a movie called Beavers. It was made for the IMAX uh, screen. And tells you all about beavers. I guess not all of them chop down trees. They all kind of have their roles. Some of them don't do anything. Okay, let me try to get this. Um, stand up for this one. All right. couple fallen trees. All right, I'm looking, I'm eyeballing that. I just, I have to do it one more. Okay, kind of composition in threes, right? Okay, let's see. Hmm. 
I think maybe this time at a little bit of more of an angle. Okay. Good. All right. Um, some additional texture, trying to incorporate the uh, those logs and with the surrounding area. Um, kind of the whole name of the game in the blending of imagery is uh, you know, the word is uh, seamless. Trying to make things nice and seamless. Okay. And wipe off some of the bottom of the spiny branch so that it's kind of going into the uh, grass a little bit. I could also mask off like this and do that, but let's just kind of go with this right now. springtime this bush is full of leaves and berries or something like that so it kind of goes along with the spirit of the uh, the season that this is representing okay I'm just going for the top portion of them in some areas that's not so symmetrical. And let me see. I want the larger version of it kind of closer in the foreground. Surely. And this is the Eerie Moon stamp. It's going to have it peeking from between those trees. I really wipe off a lot of them. And this, I want it to be, this seem to be real, to have a lot of, kind of atmosphere and, uh, depth and value. Okay, so let's go. Eh, let me mask off some of this bottom portion. I don't need to mask off the trees because they're solid black. Which way do I want this going in here? How about this? I'll have it kind of peering in from behind those trees. Like so. Okay. And I'm going to go for a second impression here. I'll try to have it coming in from uh, kind of the reflection of it down here. Okay, so it's kind of a lighter value. Um, right there. There's the bottom portion. Um, I'll probably be adding more things, but not right now. Anyways, okay. Uh, half page, eight and a half by eleven. Half of an eight and a half by eleven, so it's uh, um, eight and a half by five point five. Takes a little bit of time in the composition, especially if you're using quite a few stamps. Um, all right, I thought I was going to be able to start toning in, but. Uh, that's not going to happen, so 
Let's just finish off the composition right here and try to really expedite the process in the next uh, video. This is the uh, tiny rock stamp. Okay, that's just adding a little bit of surface uh, to the scene. Come down there, it adds a little bit of texture. Maybe I can add some of that down here as well. Not that this isn't supposed to be a reflection of it.